Hey everybody, it's Melissa. I am just gonna shut off this light behind because it looks like the angels are singing. I feel like it's almost, ah, that's so much better. Anyway, um, hey guys, it's me. It's been a while since I've done a live stream here on YouTube and the reason why truthfully is because, well, it's the season. So um, we just got past the holidays, but I wanted to be able to do this live stream so bad because I think it's needed. Um, and I'm going to talk a lot about how we just have weight loss. We just don't, we really, really don't understand it in the context that we should. In the respect that oftentimes the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to trying to lose weight is focusing on the weight. Now that might sound totally counterintuitive to you because you might be thinking, well, Aren't I supposed to be focusing on the weight because I want to be able to lose weight? Yes. However, um, I also feel that it's really, really, really darn important for you to understand the underlying causative factors behind it. Because frankly, if you are trying to lose weight by just taking every diet supplement or shake or... Um, trying a new diet, if you've tried a new, if you've tried a fad diet and you know, you've tried something and you fall off the bandwagon, uh, comment in here and let me know. But this is a big thing because I find that it's just not sustainable. There are a lot of factors behind this and I address the causative factors behind uh, weight gain um, in a free guide, a brand spanking free guide that I've put together. You guys can get it for free. So you can download the... Um, uh, my free, sorry for the uh, shaking camera, free weight uh, loss guide. And I just put that here. So here's the thing. In this guide, what I've actually done, and it's totally free, um, I've outlined various causative factors. And we're going to be talking about one of them today, and that is about the liver. It's a really big one. In fact, every single patient that I work with, I am always addressing the liver all the time. And the reason why is because this is a really large organ. It works over time. And honestly, I always find that if we actually really knew just how much our bodies are working, we would have so much more gratitude for it versus always hating on our bodies is a really big thing. Um, did you liberty toss lost weight but gained it back? But here's the thing. If that's the case, then there's something that's going on that isn't sustainable for you. And that's something that has to be addressed. Hey, how's it going? Um, so that's what we're going to address are the sustainable parts. And some people gain weight back because either lifestyle changes kind of just go back to the way they were before. Um, you know, and that's going to be a really big thing. If your boundaries slip, if you go back to eating crap, um, all these things can actually uh, put you at risk to, you know, not implementing something as a lifestyle. And that's really, really what we want to be able to do. Um, you're very welcome, uh, Lachman uh, Ramkishor. So here's what we're going to be going through today. We're going to be talking about the role of the liver congestion and weight loss. Number one, I'm going to be talking about emotions. Um, you know, it's funny because I, I, I've been doing this weight loss series uh for a bit and I've been saying how um behind every single weight issue that I've seen you cannot discount the important role of your emotions and some people think it's hooey like some people are like that's just total craziness but the reality is you cannot separate the mind from the body now I'm not going to go totally spiritual woo woo on that but it does play a massive role so we're going to talk about that and that's very much from a Chinese medical perspective um that I want to really be able to uh, talk about. The other thing we're going to speak about is the principle of pain and suffering. Uh, this is a huge one that I think a lot of women really struggle with. I'm going to describe more about what I'm talking about at that point. And also the fact that, you know, this whole notion, and you're going to hear me drive this home today, that the biggest issue uh, with people trying to lose weight is that they're trying to uh, really focus on losing the weight rather than the underlying issues. It's like if you can, it's like if you do a plan, you do it, and then all of a sudden things come back. Either the lifestyle changes have it didn't become a lifestyle for you, or there are other issues there that need to be addressed. Now, I am not a practitioner who will ever say to you that there's one root cause. You're going to hear me say this a lot in this presentation as well. And the reason why that I don't say that is because by saying there's one root cause, oftentimes it makes people try to look for that silver bullet that's going to address it. 
Does that make sense? And that's the reason why I don't like saying there's one root cause because then people go, well, what supplement can I take? And it just doesn't work that way. So I want to be very clear about that. There are causative factors. So in that free guide that I literally uh, just uh, posted there, I detail a whack of different causative factors. I don't want it to overwhelm you, but especially when it comes to your health, if you are grappling with something, whether it's weight, PCOS, endometriosis, fibroids, uh, digestive issues, there are causative factors as to why you are struggling with those issues. Hey, Trina and Kimberly. Goodness, I love that. Just thank you for coming in, guys. Um, so that guide actually talks about that. And it tells you about um, blood tests that you need to get from your doctor. You know, we go to our doctor and we think that they're just going to give us, you know, all the testing that we need. But believe it or not, that doesn't always happen. So check out that guide and you can see a lot more. It is free. And um, I have all those things. Geez. Well, see, this is the other thing. And one of the things that I will say is that women notorious come to me and they feel broken. Like everything is falling apart. Anyone here feel like that? Because if you do, I can tell you that the liver plays a massive role behind it. It's why liver work is behind everything that I do in practice. Um, we're always supporting it. And that's the reason why there's so much um, potential for it to become congested. So let's talk a little bit about what makes it congested. We're going to talk a little bit about some things that could absolutely influence that. Um, and one of the things that, um, hi, thanks for the great guide. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. Um, I put a lot of work into that, so I'm really glad that you enjoy it. Um, one of the things that I have been seeing a lot, and because I'm always reading, I'm an avid book reader, um, and I read a lot, is I've been reading a lot about some trends that have been happening. And one of the trends that I've been seeing is everyone is jumping on the medical medium train. And I'm not saying by any stretch that medical medium is a big pile of hooey, because that's not what I'm saying either. Um, there's always validity in every single thing that comes out. So I want to be able to say that because I, I know that there's going to be a bunch of people go, I've been trying it. It's amazing. You don't know what you're talking about. There's always someone who's going to complain. Um, but the thing, the reason why I bring this up is because the part about his philosophy that I don't agree with, I think it's very bad science. And when we look at studies, you're like, oh, there's a study for this. But what was the quality of the study? Uh, how many participants were in the study? Um, what was the context of the study? There's a lot of things to be able to really um, factor into that. And with the medical medium, the thing that I don't much like is the fact that I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna write a whole blog post on that. I'm, I'm gonna probably be doing that this week. Um, is the fact that he feels that um, he really poo-poo's the whole high fat. Uh, low carb thing. So he's very much into uh, lots of fruits, uh, lots of vegetables, which listen, if you are following a standard American diet, which is like high carb, refined, etc. And then you go into consuming what he's talking about, which is primarily vegetarian, very high in fruit. And he's like, don't fear the fruit. Um, you're obviously going to feel better initially because you're getting away from all these refined foods. So the pendulum is going to swing that one way. Is that going to be sustainable? I don't believe that it is. Um, the reason why the livers do get congested, um, he is incorrect when he says that it is due to fat. That's actually very poor science. Um, the reason why the livers get congested is because when you are consuming an excess amount of sugar, and I'm not saying that fruit is bad because I'm not. Um, if when I travel and I'm in a hot country, to be completely honest with you, I'm eating a lot of fruit. It's cooling. I eat what's seasonal there, what's from the location because you're going to be being exposed to uh, different bacteria, which is going to help to support your microbiome, which is the friendly world in your gut. So fruit is great for you. However, if you are eating a high uh, sugary diet, whether it's refined sugars, like so white sugar and refined carbs, like breads and pastas and white rice, et cetera. Um, but even if you are consuming a high amount of like potatoes and um, brown rice and other grains that would otherwise have been consumed thought of as healthy. I'm not saying that they are not healthy, but what I am saying is that we need to have a balance. So today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about that because when we don't and we're consuming this very high starch diet, those starches break down 
into glucose, which is sugar. Okay. Now your body has glucose is kind of like the money in your, in your wallet. It's easy to get to, right? Easy to get to. Now you have a bunch of sugar in your body that's stored in your muscles and also your liver, in the form of glycogen. This is the stored sugar. Now, when I tell people this, and they're like, glycogen, glucose, what the F? I don't know what the heck you're talking about. I always give them the analogy of like, you know, glucose is like the money in your wallet. It's easy to get to for your body to get to. But glycogen, which is the stored sugar, which is in your muscles and in your liver, is stored um, and it's like a money in a vault. It's a little bit harder for your body to get to. Now, as let's just say, you know, morning I wake up and I'm eating um, a big bowl of oatmeal. I'm not saying oatmeal is bad, okay? And I'm gonna give an example of why it isn't bad, but I'm just giving a context of a very high starchy day, okay? So I'm never saying foods are necessarily bad per se, but I wake up, I have oatmeal. Then all of a sudden I rush to, to get to the office and I'm like, oh, I can't get to the office. And I get like a, a, a granola bar from the, the little store at the base of my office building, okay? I'm just putting a day of the life of, say, a corporate person, which used to be me, um, or a bagel, for example. And then I have like that, that granola bar and a cup of coffee. And then lunchtime comes. Well, lunchtime, I decide that I want to be able to get um, some pasta, or I want to get a slice of pizza, or I want to get some Thai food. So I go and I eat that, even if I want to get a wrap, right? Then, uh, you know, midday comes and I'm starting to crash. So maybe I have that second cup of coffee. Maybe I have another little treat uh, from downstairs or the cafeteria. And then dinner comes. Well, dinner comes and I want to have some vegetables and then I have some brown rice and then I have uh, some chicken, let's just say. Well, this whole day is very starchy. Okay. Now I'm not saying oatmeal is terrible and I'm looping back on that notion because I know, you know, slap happy keyboard folks out there are going to be like, oh my God, how do you say that? Well, listen, when I actually climbed Mount Batur with my husband in Bali, um, what we had actually before we went to this, this, this uh, hike up this volcano uh, was oatmeal. And we did so because I knew that the food that they were going to be serving the guides were going to be typical like trekking food, which is very high refined foods. And then what I call creepy boiled eggs. You never know if you're going to get sick off of them. And that oatmeal really helped to sustain me. So it was perfect in that context. Would I have that every single day and then have a granola bar for a snack and then have all this carb for lunch? And you know what I mean? All that no. And the reason why is because when you consume these foods, they break down into glucose, that sugar that runs freely. Remember money in your wallet. And over time, when you're eating foods like this, so your blood sugar isn't balanced. You will find that you'll get hungry uh, quicker. So that whole notion before of like, you got to eat every couple of hours. The only reason why that, that, that was people said that was to control your blood sugar because the foods that generally people were consuming, especially back in the day when eggs are bad, which is one of the things that he says is bad for you, which to me is like preposterous because there's so much benefits to eggs, which I'm not gonna get into at this moment. So, you know, when your blood sugar isn't balanced, your stress hormones are completely out of whack. And we know that when your stress hormones are completely out of whack, where do you gain weight? Around the midsection, my friends. Not a good thing. And when you're stressed, when was the last time that you craved a salad when you're stressed, right? When I'm stressed or if I'm tired, I want to eat carbs and there is no question. And if, if you feel the same, let me know. But that's a really big thing to understand. So we have to manage our stress levels by managing our blood sugar. We can't do that on a, high, on a higher carbohydrate diet, okay? So that sort of diet, we're eating high carbs for a long period of time. What happens is, is when you consume those foods, you get a surge of a hormone called insulin. Insulin, just so you know, is a fat storage hormone. Okay. So eating these high carbohydrate foods, you're pumping out this insulin. And eventually, um, when you are consuming this, this diet for a long period of time, your body becomes, and what's called insulin resistant. What that means is when you're insulin resistant, the body does not know 
when to stop pumping out insulin. So it doesn't know when to stop pumping out this fat storage hormone. So it's like, okay, here's more insulin, more insulin, more insulin, more insulin. Like it keeps doing it. So it's insulin resistant. It's resistant to understanding. Like it's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Versus what you want is you want the body to become insulin responsive. Okay. Insulin. So you want to improve the insulin sensitivity. So the more sensitive your body is to the insulin, the more it's going to go, we good though. You don't need to keep pumping out more of this insulin fat storage hormone business, right? So when we end up pumping out all this insulin, we start to store fat, okay? Because this, this food, this high carbohydrate diet breaks down to sugar, this is what congests our liver, okay? Um, I am going to give you some caveats, though, about high fat, low carb, and keto. Um, I will talk a little bit about that and how it's not great for necessarily everyone. And you might be like, what? What's going on? Okay, so just bear with me here because I got to take this to stages. But when we see people who are getting this fatty liver, and this is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which 90 million Americans have, it becomes very difficult for you to detoxify properly, especially given that your liver is such a very, has a very big role in detoxification for a lot of your sex hormones, especially estrogen, which a lot of women know about because a lot of women that I work with struggle with estrogen related conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, ovarian cysts, piece, uh, fibroids, endometriosis, adenomyosis, um, even nodules to a degree have some correlation with estrogen dominance because if we have too much estrogen, it blocks the conversion of uh, our, our thyroid hormones from converting. Okay, I'm going to keep that as simple as possible. And we need thyroid function also to make sure that we are not gaining weight because low thyroid function, we know that people tend to pack on pounds. And side note, if you don't know this about me already, I have Hashimoto's and I've been able to manage my weight. So I, I say this because the notion that um, high fat is terrible is incorrect. And the notion that it is terrible because it makes your liver fatty is actually incorrect. It is when we have too much of those starches coming in, that's what's going to break down the sugar. And it's the sugar that makes your liver fatty. So it's very, very important to understand that. The problem is, is when we have that, and remember, alcohol also does this. Now, that shouldn't be a surprise because alcohol breaks down to sugar. That's why a lot of alcoholics, recovering alcoholics, end up craving sugar because they're switching one addiction for the other. Now, when you have someone who has a fatty liver, and then all of a sudden they go and they're like, I'm going to eat a high fat, low carb diet. And then some people will find that when they're trying to do that, that they are feeling, uh, they're struggling a little bit from digesting the fats. And this is where the high fat, low carb diet doesn't work for everybody. Now I actually advocate the high fat, low carb diet within reason. So, you know, it's always very difficult to create a program, uh, which I love doing, but to create it for everybody. It's the reason why we always have group support for all the programs that I offer for people. Um, but the one thing that I say to people is this, if that is the case and you find that you're really struggling with digesting fat, so let's say you poop, and yes, we're going to talk about poop, and you're, the toilet is streaky, so you're not digesting this fat. One of the things you could do is you can add in a fiber supplement, okay? That can help it tremendously. Remember that your liver makes something called bile, Okay. I always think of like, bile is like the sticky yellow fluid. And what it does is it actually helps to carry out uh, toxins and hormones so that it can be eliminated from the body. But it's stored in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder swells up like a balloon. And then when it squeezes out that bile, it deflates, right? So it's like a little pancake afterwards. And some people have just are really sluggish at eliminating um, bile. So some of the things that you can do um, that I suggest to people is add in bitter foods. This is something that's a big a big thing in North America. We see it a lot more in Asia. Um, but things like you know rapini or arugula 
or uh, watercress. These are all incredible foods to really help you uh, with uh, bioflow. The other thing that helps with bioflow, and this is the part which I am going to write a blog post about this, and I actually agree with Medical Medium on, is the celery juice. Now, here is a really effed up part about celery. About celery. So celery, uh, yes, it does help to cool liver heat, according to Chinese medicine. The liver in Chinese medicine does tend to get hot. It's not an organ that tends to get cold. It gets hot. And you think of the emotions associated to an imbalanced liver is anger and frustration um, and depression, but depression's anger turned inwards. So uh, celery definitely uh, juice can be what can be wonderful in that regard. Now I laugh about this because I bought celery, um, and when, and like literally two grocery stores were like completely um, sold out from it. And I laugh because I'm like, of course. But that is the one thing that I do actually agree with what he's doing. But I don't agree with his notion about how you know, like even the diet plan. It's like okay, breakfast is like lots of fruit. And then it's like a fruit smoothie with like very high fruit, high sugary fruits. And then a snack is another fruit smoothie. And I'm like, this is crazy. Your insulin levels are going to go off the charts. You don't need to have this. And I wouldn't even want to digest that in the dead cold winter of Toronto wouldn't work for me also because it's just too cold. It's not something that I would want to have. Um, so this is something that I just want to be able to, to, to let people know that I do feel that if you work on your liver, like you can take bitters, um, you can take bitters before you eat. And bitters have been used historically in herbal medicine for a very long time. Now, um, this is not to be confused at all um, with um, uh, Swedish bitters. Swedish bitters has senna in it. And senna is a habit-forming laxative herb, and that is not what you want to be taking. So Urban Moonshine um, Digestive Bitters, if you're in the U.S., uh, don't get the maple-flavored one. Uh, get the original one because bitters is supposed to taste like crap, okay? It's supposed to taste bitter. That's the therapeutic value of having bitters. So I take bitters with me everywhere. I always have a bottle in my purse, always. Um, if you're in Canada, St. Francis Herb Farm uh, also makes bitters called Canadian bitters. Um, really great. Um, so any of those companies are totally fine. I have no affiliation. This is not an advertisement for them. They're not paying me to tell you this. I'm just letting you know because people always ask me questions about it. So um, those are definitely some really amazing things that I would strongly suggest from a liver supportive perspective. Okay. So that's something that I want to just kind of like put out there. The other thing is understanding that from a lifestyle perspective, your liver needs love. So you can't just eat all the liver loving foods that you want and expect this weight to fall off because you need a healthy liver for weight loss. You also have to make sure that you're doing the lifestyle stuff as well. And this is where people often fall. And this is where people go, I did a plan that was yours and then I gained weight back. And then I'm like, well, that's kind of like a smidget of the story. What else was going on? Right? So lifestyle is very important and you can fall off the bandwagon. I mean, how many people have fallen off the bandwagon here when they've done a plan? Many people, myself included. The benefit of falling off a of, of plan is to remember how great you felt when you were on it. And it's a reminder to get yourself back on. So lifestyle things with the liver that's really important, I can't stress enough, is sleep. Now, right now, I have a diva ring light that's shining bright in my face as I'm talking to you guys. And normally, I would have these, like, uh, and it's in my, oh, I was totally in my bedroom. But I have the uh, the blocker glasses, the yellow blocker glasses. Um, and sorry, they're the blue blocking glasses, and they're yellow tinged. And you look like, it looks ridiculous when I'm wearing them. But normally, you know, if I'm in front of the computer, I'm normally off of all devices at by 8 p.m. latest. That includes even the TV. Your body needs time to wind down. Otherwise, it will stress your liver. Your liver will not detoxify efficiently if you are stressed. And if you're someone, like, who here is stressed? A lot of us. Meditation. People tell me all the time, oh my God, meditation, I am not good at meditating at all. Everyone wants like the supplement. What supplement can I take? But the second I ask them about the basics, are you drinking enough water? Are you drinking half your body weight in ounces of water? Um, are you 
you know, taking accountability. So for those of you guys who are saying that you're stressed out, are you taking accountability for the stress that you're co-creating? That's a big, oh no, you didn't, Melissa, say that. It did. Because every single resentment that we have and stress that we have, we have to begin to take accountability for our, the role that we played in it. Otherwise, there's no way that you can set up a boundary around it. You just can't set up healthy boundaries otherwise. So I, I say to people, I cannot stress the importance of the lifestyle, the lifestyle changes that are required for your liver to actually detoxify efficiently. If your liver doesn't detoxify efficiently, guess what it doesn't detox? Estrogens. And if it's not detoxifying estrogens and even testosterone, guess what ends up happening? We end up gaining weight. And when we are gaining weight, that weight deposition tends to fall around the hips, um, butt, and thighs. And you might be like, oh girl, I got lots of that here. But listen, I am part Latin American, so trust me, baby got back. So I'm not talking about genetically. I'm talking about if that's where you know, like, hey, I'm gaining a lot of weight in this area. If there is an estrogen dominant, that definitely could be a result of estrogen. But more so, you have to make sure that you're loving that liver. And yes, the bitters work really well. Yes, making sure that you're increasing your greens to 75 to 80% of your plate. That's a huge amount of greens. But it's important because generally carbohydrates is what is what rules people's plates. And this is something that I'm working really hard on developing something that people can look at and go, how's my plate supposed to look like? And giving them examples is something that I'm, I'm working on right now. But when we're not addressing the liver, the emotions from a Chinese medical perspective are things like anger, frustration, um, and depression, even feeling stuck. Okay. So when we think of, of um, feeling stuck or anger or depression, we got to look and go, okay, so how is my sleep? What time are you going to bed? This is one of the number one areas that the women that I work with really fail at, sleep. I'm not talking about shift workers, like, you know, because I know you guys have totally different schedules, which is not the greatest, to be honest. I'm talking about you being on, you know, watching TV or aimlessly scrolling at like on Instagram and Facebook, someone you haven't seen since high school. All of that is actually damaging your liver because you're not giving the body the time that it needs to rest. Being connected on social devices and electronics, like what we're on right now, also reduces your serotonin, which is your feel-good happy hormone, and it reduces your dopamine, which is the neurotransmitter that signals the reward pathways of the brain. It's why some people, you know, this. it's why sex feels good or why eating chocolate feels good. Uh, it's because it hits that reward pathway of the brain. And that's what social media and all these uh, electronics do. But as it begins to deplete this, we feel more addicted and more depressed. And it all begins to add on another layer of stress for the liver. And the liver is the last thing that you want stressed because if it's stressed, ain't nothing, like there's so much that's going to be impaired just because it's such, it plays such a key role in detoxification. So because I only have so much time with you guys, I please remember to uh, download that guide that I posted above. I'll post it again here, but it's really important that you guys take a look at it because I detailed a bunch of causative factors, other causative factors towards weight. Because the thing that I want you guys to understand, there isn't one thing that is the reason why you're struggling to lose the weight. It's not one thing. There are layers. Now, that might actually make people feel super... Um, um, I'm not discouraged, but I don't want you to feel discouraged. But once we start to remove those factors, as we begin to remove those stressors, you start to feel better. One of the things that the reason why we're talking today is about the liver. In that guide, I actually talk about the other causative factors there, 
minerals, heavy metal toxicity, like there's a lot of other things that I see very common. And one thing I do want to touch on here, that's going to kind of freak you guys out a little bit, but I'm going to be doing some more live streams coming up to go more in depth about this. Um, I'm doing an entire month long about um, uh, weight. And so uh, you're going to be hearing me talk a lot about this, but um, the liver is the primary storage site for bio unavailable copper. Now that might not mean anything to you at all, but I wanted to say this about copper. It is rampant. I'm gonna be doing an entire live stream on that specific mineral because I got so much to say about it. And I will probably say a lot about it. But for the discussion of this topic, the reason why that I'm bringing it up is because often, because it's the primary storage type of copper is the liver, that's why we're talking about it in this specific um, live stream. But where do we get copper from? We get it from unfiltered drinking water. Um, the drinking water uh, the filtration systems that I like, and again, this is not an ad, so I don't want any like slaptastic happy trolls out there. This is an ad. It's not an ad. Um, the one that I have in my kitchen is Berkey. I really like Berkey, and I also upgraded to get their uh, fluoride filters as well. But uh, unfiltered water is a big source of copper. The birth control pill, even if you took it 20 years ago, you probably are still copper toxic. If you never took the birth control pill, but your mama was on the birth control pill before she had you, she will end up passing copper in utero, which is crazy. Um, other sources of it um, are swimming pools because copper is used as a disinfectant. But the thing is, when we end up having all this copper coming in, even though copper is, is supposed to be this antibacterial and an antifungal, and people are drinking from those, those copper bottles, it's not actually going into the cells. It's going into its storage site, which is the liver. When it does that, this is bio-unavailable copper, and it wreaks havoc. And the reason why, yes, even the copper IUD, Rebecca, the reason why that I bring this up is because of the fact, and a lot of women are like, so you're against copper IUD, what do I use for protection? The family planning method is actually 98% effective when used correctly, okay? Um, but the problem with this is when we have a lot of copper in our system that's stored in our liver, by the way, second storage site of copper is the brain, we will see that detoxification becomes impaired. And remember, we need a healthy liver to be able to facilitate weight loss because the, the liver also helps to metabolize fats. So when we see this liver that is congested, not just because, hey, I had a diet previously and I'm eating loads of carbohydrates or I drank lots of wine, who here drinks more than four servings of alcohol per week? And be completely honest, okay? And when I say four servings, I'm not talking about like, you're poor. Because I remember when I used to drink, I've been sober for almost 500 days now. Woo but when I used to, to pour myself a glass of wine, it was not a serving. I'll tell you that much right now. It was like I gave myself a good hefty serving of alcohol, okay, of wine. It was way more. But if you're drinking more than four servings of alcohol per week and you're trying to get ahead on your weight loss efforts, you're trying to be healthier, I'm telling you, it is impeding your process. I'm not against alcohol by any stretch, but I will tell you, um, I just don't have a healthy relationship with it, but I certainly don't poo-poo people who do drink alcohol. But I think that the majority of women with the amount of alcohol memes that are out there, it's just not funny. You don't need rosé to get through your day. Like alcohol, like food, has been like, has been used as an award system, a reward system. So I've been good all week. I should have, I can have that bottle of wine. The amount of women I know that um, binge drink and are actually do have a dysfunctional relationship with it is quite large to the point that I've had women email me their stories about it and say, you know, I've, I really, you know, probably over exceed this. I had a bad day, have a drink, been good all week, have a drink. It's almost like this reward um, uh, um, 
system that we've used. The same thing with food. And we do this with children. Oh, you're really good. Okay, here's this cookie. Now shut up, right? Because kids can just wear out parents. And listen, there is um, absolutely um, no judgment on my part because um, I'm not a mom. So I can't, so I can't say anything to that, that degree. But I will say that we're using food as a reward system. We're not using it as a form of nourishment. And oftentimes the reward that we're giving to ourselves from a food perspective is very high in carbs. When we're not, when we're, when people say to me, Oh my God, I have horrible food cravings. Anyone here have crazy, um, food cravings. And just so you guys know, so that we're staying on the topic of this, I'm not going to be talking about uh, going diving into deep on birth control. We're staying on the topic of the liver and weight. So please, um, please know that that is like something I just want to stay on topic so that we respect everybody's time. So if I didn't get the question, that's probably why. So how many of you guys here are emotional eaters or have a really hard time with food cravings? Because if that's you, I will tell you right now, usually the number one question they ask is, are you tired? How tired are you? That's the number one question. Emotional. Jane says, I've gained 100 pounds in five years. Rebecca says, me. How tired are you guys? It's always the question I get. And you know, the crazy thing is when I ask women, how tired are you? Um, so Jewel says, I get cravings a lot. And yes, I'm exhausted. So when I ask women this, a lot of women actually end up tearing up because they go, oh, I'm so exhausted. I'm so exhausted. I'm so exhausted. This is the thing that I want to be able to say is that when you are so exhausted, you are going to crave carbs. So that's where you have to look at it and go, go to bed earlier or seriously be able to look at your routines at night. To love your liver is to be able to put your body into a parasympathetic state, which is a rest and digest state versus a fight or flight state, which is what uh, most people operate in. And to be able to do that, do you actually have a nighttime routine? As I mentioned to you guys, by eight o'clock, all my devices, I'm off from my devices. It's probably why I read so much. But if you're like, I feel like reading, I'm so tired. The last thing I want to do is just mindlessly watch TV. Can't I do that? Well, switch it up, go for a walk or take a bath or journal. But I really want you to be able to um, really uh, factor what that means for you is what does that routine look? What is what what makes sense to you? Because when you're actually thinking like, okay, I'm going to watch TV and I'm going to jump into bed and sleep, your brain is still going, and there's no way that you can fall asleep. So you'll stay up for hours trying to get to bed. And this is where I feel that women are really struggling is, yes, Yvonne's already crying. And this is, I, I hear this all the time from women and I feel ya. Um, but when you feel like you're an emotional wreck, it's like you have to look at your life and go, where am I responsible for the resentments I have? I'm not saying take full responsibility, but really look at the role that you've played. Are you giving to somebody in your life who you know for a fact is just going to take advantage of you? Then you end up playing victim. And I want to take women who are super powerful beings from being victims to victors in their life and to be able to go, okay, so is this, if you want to be here, you want to lose weight, you want to feel energized, you want to feel vital, you, all of that is what you're doing. And ask yourself this, is this in alignment with, with who that person is? Because what you want is going to demand a different version of you. And unless you get your phone out of your bedroom, like if you use it as an alarm, great, but then put it on the other side of the room. Are you doing things that are going to help you in alignment? One of the things I suggest to women is make sure, and I'm just, for some reason, my, uh, do this really quickly here. There we go. One of the things I suggest to people is take your social media apps off your phone. The only social media app I have on my phone is my Instagram. That's it. 
That's it. It's just my Instagram because I need it for uh, like to post things. Facebook is off. Facebook Messenger's off. Amazon's off my phone. Pinterest is off my phone. YouTube's off my phone. Etsy's off my phone. These are all things that would suck the, the life out of me. But when I am having these on my phone, I couldn't believe how many times I would pick up my phone and just end up looking at it. Take the social apps off your phone. I know that that sounds crazy to say, given that I'm in an online business, but believe me, it is really, really, really screwing. How do I promote my business? Well, I promote my business because I'm at my desk right now. And I have scheduled times when I'm at my desk and I get shit done. So I schedule times when I'm on Facebook that I need to be on Facebook and engaging with people or answering emails. But the one thing that I will tell you is you don't need to be connected 24 seven or you will be tired and you will eat everything in your fridge. I can guarantee you it's not going to be green. It's going to be sugar. It's going to be carbs. I can tell you that right now. So those are some really, really big things. Otherwise, if you've got all this anger and this frustration that's there, it's going to really hamper you quite a bit. So always go back to basics. Am I drinking enough water? Number two, when you wake up with that water, and actually that's just number one. So when you wake up, I want you to start off your day and you can start off your day drinking 16 ounces of water and add it, or actually, yeah, 16 ounces of water. And I want you to add in a generous pinch of sea salt. Okay. When you do this, it's actually fueling your minerals and your adrenals, which really does help your liver. But your liver is stagnant first thing in the morning. You can even add in some lemon to that as well. Drink that first thing in the morning. Get that water in. Okay. The other thing is your body is designed to move. Okay. Designed to move. If you are not moving and you are stagnant, it's going to harm your liver because it's going to add stress to your liver. So it's not just foods that add stress to your liver. It's not getting enough sleep. It's being dehydrated. It's eating, it's eating all the carbs, having all the sugar, drinking all the coffee, all the vino, and then you're in this really vicious loop. So do an assessment of your day. What would you, what do you feel be a better thing to do? I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to start off my day with 16 ounces of, you know, room temperature water. When I do that, then I'm going to maybe meditate. I am going to, I'm going to move. There are so many online programs from Yoga Glow, Aloe Yoga, all these sort of different platforms that are out there that are absolutely phenomenal. And it's like 20 bucks a month. Again, no affiliation, no one paid me to talk about them. But that's what I use. A, it's cheap and cheerful, and it's amazing. But when I hear people talk about the liver and they're talking about like supplements, and they're like, oh my God, it's so expensive, or foods, yes, these are all great things. But if you're not doing the lifestyle part, it's going to be really difficult because the lifestyle of really messing up the lifestyle part of not getting enough sleep and all the things I just spoke about is what's going to promote you to add on another layer of stress, which is the diet, okay? And yes, clean water. And that's the reason why I was saying is please make sure that your water is filtered. Um, you know, people will use the filtered water in the fridge, um, but those actually can get quite moldy and they don't filter out a lot of metals. So look at the Berkey filter. Again, it didn't pay me to say this, this is not an ad, um, but it is a really great water filtration. There's another one called Pure Effects. I believe it may be a little bit cheaper. Um, and those are some really great ones as well. Um, that's a lot of shelves. It's a lot of books. Um, and thank you so much, uh, Gabby. I'm glad that you're liking this. So yes, it's called Berkey, B-E-R-K-E-Y. Or there's another one called uh, Pure Effects, uh, which just screws onto your tab. So those are some really great things to really be able to look at. So, Guys, if you want to be able to lose weight, the number one thing that you're doing wrong is focusing on the weight. I know that sounds crazy, but weight is just a symptom. Weight is just a symptom of inflammation, and that inflammation is due to various forms of stress on the body that usually happen in layers. 
So make sure that you download my free guide because in that free guide, I talk about many other causative factors that you probably should need to know about, especially if you're trying to lose weight. The liver was one that I really want to concentrate on because it's a very important topic, but it's not the only one. So weight is just a symptom. The problem is we're looking at it like it is root cause. I got to fix this weight. So therefore, I'm going to take this shake that my friend told me about that worked for her, or I'm going to take this pill, or I'm going to go on this fad diet, but it doesn't work that way. Um, no, the guide is the guide is not a virus. Um, and I think that that's probably spam. So I'm going to just put that user in a timeout because that's crazy pants. Anyways, um, so I want to be able to let you guys know absolutely for sure that you have to look at weight as though it's a causative factor. I say that because causative factors means that there's various ones of them. Okay. Weight is a symptom. It's just a symptom. So what are the causative factors that are creating that weight, that are creating the inflammation? That's all weight is. It's, it's inflammatory part of it, right? And when we have that inflammation, think about weight historically. What did it do? People gained weight in the winter time because it protected them, right? So from an emotional perspective, ask yourself, what are you protecting yourself from? Oftentimes people will go, oh, I want to get out of this. My life sucks and everything's horrible and I have a horrible job and I'm so tired and the kids and everything else. And I'm like, I empathize with you. But you got to take yourself out of being the victim. Victims love to be hurt. And in that regard, when they are hurt, they almost feel even subconsciously that someone is caring about them. Someone's listening to them. And that's the thing. And I was one of the biggest victims ever before where I was like, I just need, and you just use like, com you commiserate with other people. You're just talking and complaining and complaining and complaining or gossiping. And this is life. Everything coming out of you is so flipping negative, but it's a way of commiserating and connecting with people, but we can connect with people on a much higher level. So when you have a, when you have a lot of weight, so large weight to you is totally. Uh, Brenda says you have a large amount of weight to lose. Is it extreme inflammation? It's definitely systemic inflammation for sure. When we think inflammation, we think like, oh, I bumped my arm and oh, I've got this welt. Systemic inflammation is things like weight is a part of it. PCOS, endometriosis, these are forms of inflammation. So we have to address what's creating the inflammation. And you have to address the liver as a part of it. You have to address digestion and eat good quality foods. And in the top of this live stream, I spoke about the kinds of foods that you want to avoid and the kinds of foods that you want to add in. I talked about water, which was very important. You have to look at the causative factors that could be creating inflammation. It's the reason why I developed that free guide, because it talks about many other causative factors that promote inf the inflammatory response in the body. And I have a lot more that's coming out, guys. Make sure that you download that guide because I got free videos that are coming out that are seriously going to blow the roof off the industry because I'm so sick and tired of people saying, um, here, take this pill or try this diet or you know, it's the reason why people do paleo or keto and they're like, it didn't work for me. I'm like, well, it probably didn't work because there were other causative factors that were at play that is the reason why you have the weight there to begin with. And that's what we have to address. Never knew this was liver and inflammation correlation. Yeah. So weight is definitely a sign of inflammation. Always. Uh, so Jane says here, got my gallbladder removed and worried that more stress on the liver got the guide. I know I have to get my weight off. Bitters in the Amazon chart. Sweet. So one of the biggest questions that I definitely have um, from getting from people is I don't have a gallbladder. A lot of women don't have a gallbladder. You still definitely like Jane uh, got the bitters. Still very important um, to get bitters for sure. Still important to facilitate liver function because it's going to have a little bit more added, uh, strain on it. Absolutely. So that's a really huge part of it. Um, if you end up uh, signing up for the guide, it could take up to even 15 minutes, half an hour for you to get the guide. Um, so stay patient and always check your junk mail because 
My business is called Sexy Food Therapy, so sometimes I land in people's spam inbox. So uh, make sure you check your junk mail as well. Um, they sell bitters. You spray in your mouth 15 minutes before you eat. Yeah, so it's about 10, about five to anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes before you eat, you take your bitters. It tastes like crap. If you eat bitters and they taste sweet because they got maple flavored, they're not real bitters. You have to get them so they're bitter. Um, <laughs> Okay, guys, so that is pretty much it for today. I want to keep this under an hour. Um, I could go on and on and on. Like, we literally could spend all day together about me talking about this topic. But I wanted to be able to, to drive this home that please, if you are looking, um, if you are looking at trying to lose weight, stop addressing it as though the weight were the root cause. It's not. It's a symptom and there are causative factors behind it. And those causative factors add layers of stress. And that is literally my entire focus to educate and empower women on what those causative factors are so they can begin to remove some of those causative factors. And when you start to remove some of them, you're like, Oh my God, I feel a little better. Oh my God, I feel a little bit better. I have less shitty days. Holy crap, I'm having a better sex life. Holy crap, I just lost 10 pounds. Oh my God, I have more energy. That sounds fantastic. But you got to be patient because healing is not a linear process and it didn't take you a day to get here. So patience with yourself because I'll tell you the small little wins that you will have when you heal. What I want you to do is I want you to celebrate it like you won the lotto. And the reason why is because you have no clue how hard your body is working for you. So the next time you look in the mirror and you get and you say, oh, you're so fat. God, you're so ugly. Oh, how can you possibly say that to something, your body, which is doing everything to protect you? Inflammation. Like when you knock your, your arm, for example, and you get a welt, what is that inflammation doing? It's, it's a form of protection. It's still inflammation. But all this inflammation is a result of bad foods, poor lifestyle, heavy metal exposure. There's all those positive factors are in the guide. So check out the guide. Your body is just responding. It's doing everything in its power to protect you. So how on earth could you hate something that's doing, that's just trying to protect you? What you need to do is switch your mindset and go, fuck, I am responsible for co-creating this. And here's how I'm going to shift this. Because the person I want to be is going to demand a different version of myself. So what I'm doing right now is not aligned with that person I want to be. So I'm going to start making small shifts to become that. And you absolutely can. Absolutely can. I totally believe in you. All right, guys. I hope you have a beautiful evening. Thank you so much for joining and being on this live stream. I love you guys to the moon and back.